Welcome to the party, pal. I am Commander Tom, and last week we showed you how to build the ultimate AFK XP Skelly Grinder. This is a one-stop shop that does a lot of good work, but just because you can build it does not mean you can use it best. That's what today is for. I'm going to show you how to get every ounce of XP and how to really take your game to the next level. I'm Commander Tom, and if that sounds like a plan to you, hit like and subscribe, keep watching, and I'll show you how to master your XP. Well, the first thing you do at the end of any AFK session, and for reference, this was about a three-hour session that you're going to see some of the proceeds of, and just for the sake of just in case, I'm going to go ahead and put my boots on, just because I almost always wear my boots around here. And one of the first things I like to do is, when I'm done with the session, take a look at my dogs. Take a look at their tails and make sure they're doing okay. They work hard. What you want to do is keep an eye on their tails. If they're pointed upward, they're okay. What we want to avoid is sad, hurt dogs with tails going down. And the way that the dogs can get hurt is mostly from uh, thorn armor. That can start to add up, so at the end of every session, take a look at them, make sure the tails are up. If they're up, you're good to go. Now, in real life, the second thing you want to do then is actually set yourself up a four-minute timer. And the reason for that is because XP orbs will last for five minutes. And the reason I say for four minutes is to err on the side of caution. And something to keep in mind is that so long as we're on this red carpet, around the spawner, this machine's going to operate. And these dogs are going to go ahead and finish them off, and you're going to have a pile of XP just starting to gather here. And the hopper will take care of the items, but the hopper does not gather XP. I know. I want it to as well. So, every four minutes we come by, we pick up the uh, XP that has been gathered, and we keep working along our way. Once you've got that timer set, you're free to start walking on. And then we come over to our sorting system. Now, I went ahead and deactivated. I'll show you how I did that, in fact. Here. Let me grab my pickaxe. Okay, I believe it's this one over. Yep. Good enough. I went ahead and took the detector right here. I showed you last week you needed that. I popped that off of uh, this uh, stackable item filter. That way all of the bows came down. Because I knew I was going to show you this how-to video. And I wanted you to know what you can do with that. Now, I'm at a point where I don't need all the bows that uh, this provides. But again, I'm trying to do this for your education. All right. And since I've got a couple extra pieces of cobble, I will just chuck those there. Let's take a look here. Now, this both of these rows are non-stackable items. Let's see how... F okay. All right, so we're all going into here. And this gives you an idea of the proportions of non-stackable items that you're going to get from the skeleton versus the fish farm. Predominantly, the unenchanted bows, or some of the bows that are very low-powered, like the Power 2, is the strongest I've ever seen come from a straight skeleton farm. where And the armor comes from the skeleton farm. It's a lot of stuff that is not really worth keeping. The only real advantage that the, these bows have is, I showed in a previous video, these bows are still great for crafting dispensers. How many dispensers do you need, though? Once you've got a stack or two, I'm good for a bit. Going through here then, probably the first thing you're going to want to grab are the enchanted books. And I don't blame you. So what do we have here? Sweeping Edge, Bane of Arthropods. Protection's not bad. Blast. Power 4. That's good. Piercing. Okay. Look through here. What ones catch my eye? Okay. 
Frostwalker. Fortune 2, not bad. Power 3, but it's a Curse of Vanishing. Okay, and then of course... Okay. Alright. Alright. So, now, remember how I said I got a Curse of Vanishing? I don't deal too much with Curse of Vanishing. And, since I'm walking past, pick up the XP. Curse of Energy, I'm just going to kick it out and let that despawn. Okay, so once you've got uh, the books that you know you want to keep, obviously you're going to want to have some place to just kind of stow those away. I don't necessarily do a super organization of this. I basically come to this when I'm in the middle of uh, interested in enchanting and look through it at that point. And while we're here, then, we start looking at, then, the next stage of my sorting process. You will see that I've got these set up for enchanted bows. These are basically all the incoming bows. Then we have a, a pile I have here for Infinity and Mendy. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, there's one other thing we kind of want to look at here. And that is, at your bottom chest, you want to make sure that you can see at least one empty space, just to make sure that nothing uh, of major value is trapped in your hopper. And I pull the saddles out. Early game, those can be sold, but, you know, I'm not in my early game, so I don't really need those anymore. Take a look here. All right. And then, since we pull the armor out... I'm going to show you how you can process that most efficiently. Okay, not going to worry about leather at this stage, aside from the saddles, because you can easily clear those. Okay. Are we good? Okay, I'm not seeing a hole yet. See, that's why we do that. What I'm going to do is pull out... Okay, so... In our bottom chest, we have an empty hole, which means for certain that we've got the hoppers are cleared in the background. And since I'm walking by, we'll catch up the XP that our dogs have farmed. Thank you, boys. And we're just going to go ahead and drop the saddles. Now, I really wish you could tear those up into leather. That would be awesome. That would uh, just make this a great machine. You do get a little bit of leather from it, but it's something that would be very awesome to be able to be able to strip saddles into more leather. All right. Now, one thing I've not seen adopted too much into enchanting centers here is the grindstone. And I don't understand why it hasn't. It's awesome. With any of this gold armor, probably its best use is for uh, cycling off the XP, uh, the enchanting into XP for yourself. Now, take a look at myself there. I'm at 80 with just about 7 bars here. Let's take a look at what I get from just uh, stripping the uh, XP and enchantment off of armor here. Okay, what else enchanted? I kind of wish you could add a book in here and move enchantments onto books, but that's not a game option that I'm familiar with. But Moyang, if you're taking suggestions. Okay, that's a mending rod. I might keep that around for just in case. Okay. Takes me a little bit there. Protection 3. Alright, so once you've got all this armor stripped off, go ahead and process that down into some gold for you. Now, if I want to be hyper-technical, 
Yes, I know you can use bows as fuel, but they burn so quickly, and I know you have a ton of them. You almost need to have like a double chest just to store the bows to burn them. And for me, that's a pain. I don't necessarily like playing on that kind of detailed level, but whatever works for you. It's an option. I'll show you that it is. I'm not going to do it right this moment. That's one thing I'm not quite that pedantic about efficiency on. So I'll go ahead and drop that in there. And we'll go ahead and pick up some more XP. Like I said, this is why I like the red carpet situation. You know you keep generating it. Alright. So, let's go back to uh, the items here. Next thing I like to look into. Okay, so we're still picking up chainmail boots because the machine is still working. So make sure it's empty. We'll strip the XP off of that. I'll throw that in there for right now. Then I get the water bottles as well. Missed the chainmails before. Water bottle, water bottle, water bottle. Metal, chainmail, and gold is what you're looking for. Oh, I don't think I checked this chamber before. Bad Tom. Okay. See, so punch one. We're not going to worry too much about that. <laughs> you can tell I've uh, died through here. I thought those things were burnt. Nice to know they survived. Excellent. Okay. Alright, now. For future brewing and such... The glass bottles, or the water bottles, are worth keeping, but I do drink the water down to make them stackable. So that way this machine becomes a great supply of water bottles as we go down the line here. Have I put a storage spot in here for them? Yes, I have, right here. Alright. Let's go over here and drop those saddles off again. Now, I'm actually starting up a uh, multiplayer world in which I'm selling these saddles because it's very early days. But whatever your game situation is, this world we're looking at right this moment is single player. I don't need more saddles. And again, process the enchantments off. Okay, I think that's the enchants. Excellent. Okay. Now this bow's got a lot of durability on it, so I'm going to keep it around. And again, the gold and the chainmail, we're going to run through the furnace. Because that's then going to continue to give me some uh, golden iron off of this. Oh, I almost forgot a helmet. Excellent. Okay, so you're starting to see where you can get XP flowing in from everything. I'm going to go ahead and just chuck the leather here. Again, if I had to use for it, I might sell it, but I'm already at iron and diamond level. So, All right, now let's start taking a look at bows. What we want are the actual enchanted bows. And we just want to lightly look at them. What we're looking for are, first, we want to look through and see if we see anything that blatantly stands out at us with Mending or Infinity. 
because those are the first two big decisions you have to make. So you just lightly look at it at this stage, and then when you're actually doing the sort with those three boxes, that's when it becomes more important to get through that. You're also keeping an eye out. I know I clicked on one that's got one of those red curses. We'll figure that out in a minute. Okay. All right, so we're going to look through these, and anything that has mending or infinity, we're going to keep, and everything else we hop in here. Infinity. Curse of Vanishing. We're going to burn that one. Okay, Unbreaking. Infinity. Oop, I want Infinity. Put this center right there so we recognize it as trash. Goes. Curse of Vanishing. Power. Mending. Perfect. Infinity. Unbreaking. 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 Power. Unbreaking, unbreaking, power, power, power. Mendy. Okay. So we've got this label here with infinity bows. And this is kind of what I try to get up to. On breaking three, I like to see a power four or a power five and infinity. And by that point, I usually get something else on there. A punch two, a flame. I'm less worried about those, but my priorities are infinity or mending and on breaking three and power four or five. That's the goal. Because if I can get uh, bows like that, I'm getting myself a pretty good armory. So. We'll take each of these infinities and we'll start a new row here. And I'm showing you why we have a row here in a minute. Those are going to be trash. That is a mending bow. Okay, so we've got power five already. Mending with just punch one. Power four. Okay, these are power four mendings. You can kind of see what we're looking for here. Mending with power four. So we've got some good mending bows there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this in here because that will help with some repairs in a minute. Alright, and these curses, we'll strip off. you got to be close enough to get that XP. So, you can't completely take the curses off, but if you have any uh, other enchantments in there, you do fine. Okay, I'm not worried about burning leather boots. You got anything else in there? Okay. I might need to add just a little bit more coal. Ooh, okay. I'll get more coal later. Not worried about that. I can always split wood and throw it in there too. Alright. And while I'm over on this side, tank up on the XP. We're getting to the part of the process where you're going to need that. All right. Now, in a standard game, if you were trying to uh, actually work up brand new armor, this would be the point that it would be good for you to do that. Because you've got way more than 30 levels. You can do a lot of enchanting with different things that way. That's perfectly fine. That's easy, though. Let's talk about things people don't think about, though. Let's go back to the bow process. All right. We've got... This is an example of what we're trying to do here. So we have Unbreaking 3, Power 3, Infinity. I'd like to see if I can get uh, another Power 3 to take it to Power 4, or Power 4 and get it up to that to go with Unbreaking. So we take a look through this to see what we have here. Unbreaking, Power 3, Possibly. Power 4. Much better. 3 is possible. 2 I'm not going to worry about. 1 I'm not going to worry about. 3. Possibly. No. I'm breaking. Nope. Might keep that for a project. 2. 3. Possibly. Okay. This is a good. I'm breaking. Whoa. How, I missed this before. 
but that's why I like boxes. If you miss something, you haven't like put it into a, the lava. You just pick it up next time around. Unbreaking two. We'll keep that as possible. Unbreaking three. Power. Not bad. Power two. Unbreaking. Okay, with uh, technically five different levels of power, five doesn't usually come up, so it's usually four different levels of power. I try to focus on power uh, four and three, and I leave the ones in two. That's just kind of my general sort, and it's worked pretty decent here. So this one's already pretty much done. I'm breaking three, power four, flame, infinity, and punch one. Okay, you notice that this isn't uh, mending, though. So we need to get it built back up. That's what I'm grabbing this for. Make use of Mr. Anvil. And we have a perfect infinity bow. All right, so let's take a look here. Let's plan before we actually start building. All right, so power three and breaking three. What I really want is mostly another power three. So. It's going to be power four, and it'll also add punch. They're basically identical. Okay. Flame and infinity. So we need to get uh, high power on here as well. Okay. In fact, let's go ahead. This is unbreaking infinity. Power two punch. See if we can get the power two increased here. Okay. That's this is going to be power three, punch two, power four, infinity. Okay. It's already power four, infinity, punch two. That. It's not a bad bow right there. Power four punch two. If you wanted to put something else on that, I don't like the fire touch on my swords, but I do like the fire touch on my bows for the distance factor. But that's everyone's personal preference. So once we've got some bow pairs set up here, make use of the space situation. Let's go ahead and get these put together, see where we stand at that point. Alright, so that gives us Unbreaking 3, Power 4, Infinity with Punch 2. Not bad. Unbreaking 3, Infinity, Power 3, Punch 2. Not bad. See if we can add another power onto that. And that gives us Flame, Infinity, Power 4, Punch 2. Still, these are pretty good. Okay. Let's see, before we uh, walk away from this, can we get this up to Power 3 and Power 3? What would this do for us? Too expensive. <laughs> it's okay. Power three. Can we do this? 35. That would get us. We need to get to uh, 35. Okay. That's fine. That's again. Power three. Power three. That's why I have this. So we can just kind of keep things paired. And I use chess kind of as a save function for bows that I want to pair up. So, four, four, four. Okay. Now let's take a look at mending. Mending, I don't use too.
too much inside this game uh, because I can use all the infinity bows and that way I don't run out of you know arrows in a firefight and if I need to repair a bow or just grab a new one it's not a big deal I completely understand and appreciate people who want mending bows so I do tend to uh, make those as well it's a good habit I often like to throw a mending bow into a shulker box into my old ender chest in case I need it. Nothing wrong with it. Use that for explorations when I'm away for base longer. So we have power for mending, power for mending, power for mending. You kind of see where I'm going from here. Mending punch one. Power two, two, three, three. Power two, unbreaking three, power three. All right, so let's see if we can get some increased power bows here. So we take a three and a three, and that gets you, of course, a four. And then take the three, and I don't have enough XP yet. Speaking of which... Now this is also an example I want to put out to you. A lot of the enchantings only need you in the teens for doing your uh, you know, anvil work. So it's actually perfectly fine to work your uh, XP levels down from that 80 I began with. And then when I need uh, some more XP, I just go over and pick it up from what the dogs kill. And in that way, one thing to keep in mind is that levels increase the amount of XP they need exponentially. So the lower levels are the cheaper levels. Which that I mean lowers uh, levels 1 through 13 are cheaper than levels 70 through 83, to give you an example. So when it's asking for 13 levels, try to give it levels 1 through 13, not the higher, more expensive XP levels. Play smart game for thinkers because there is more than run and gun so that gives us power four power three okay Let's see what we can do here okay I'm breaking three power four mending with punch Power 3, and I'm breaking. Am I going to gain anything from this? Power 4. Don't really see it. Okay. Get it up to punch 2 for 27. A little bit too expensive for just punch 2. We're not too bad with that bow right there. But these are decisions that only you can make for yourself as to what you're wanting with your bows. But this gives you an example of what you can do with the bows from the AFK. Now I have not done it right now because I have two or three uh, of them with me, but another option you can do after I pick up some lovely lovely XP is you can uh, do this with the fishing rods as well. Grab a mending. Mending rods I will always take. Curse of Vanishing. Not going to touch it. Here. We'll strip it. Strip it. Strip it. Put, we'll do that for the sort. I'm breaking three, perhaps. Need to strip that. Need to melt that. Strip that. Okay. Let's see. Power one. Curse of Vanishing. If it's red, I just strip it down. I'm not going to mess with curses. I've got too good of supplies here to mess with curtain. Mending bow. I'm breaking. Look at the scene. This is a good bow right here. I have a mending, yeah, we're gonna get a good bow right out of rod right out of that. Okay. 
Another mending bow. Luck of the sea. Strip some XP. Okay. And again, let's pick up the XP. I was at zero just moments ago. And while I'm literally looking through my chest inventory, because of where I've placed my inventory, I was able to get up to level 13 just by uh, positioning and keeping the spawner active. Thinking ahead and staying close can help you out. From 13... And I go from 0 to 18 just by efficiently using the provisions of the farm. We'll drop that in. And since I'm starting to cook a little bit here, don't want to have any coal right this moment, but I've got wood. So. Okay, so I've got some rods that I need to pick up some more XP. See, it's a, just, it's a great system. Once you get set up, you've got XP here, you've got XP there. Just double check. They all are red or stripped. Okay, now, let's see what we can do with these fishing rods then. It's never bad to have a spare of anything, including your uh, AFK rod. Especially if you know you get a creeper or something or a skeleton that kills you during your AFK session, you don't want your AFK fishing rod to despawn. This is always good to have a backup then. All right, this one was pretty solid. We just needed mending. If all we needed was mending, look at the C2. Look at C2. Does it give me three? It does. So this gives me a breaking three. <laughs> and that's why I had a spare fishing rod there. So. Where'd that rod get off to? Did it get shunted all the way into the system? <laughs> oh, well. <sighs> we'll find it later. It probably got broke and then pushed into the water there, which means it's working its way through the system, which means it's likely going to get itself spit over here. In fact, there it is. No, I don't know if that is or not. <laughs> but these are some pretty good fishing rods here. Okay. Two. Luck of the Sea is the one you're really looking for. For the simple fact that from it... That increases the things you're looking for usually with uh, traditional farming. And if you really want to, yep. So that's a good bow right there. Fishing rod. Okay. These others for right now, since I usually don't make a ton of bows, I'm going to go ahead and tuck these right in here for future use. But that is the essentials of efficiently ran, squeezing the XP out of all of your options, XP Farm. I'm Commander Tom, and I thank you for watching. 
If you like this video, or it just made you laugh, leave a like and subscribe. I drop videos like this twice a week. Additionally, if you'd like to see more of this, that's what the Commander crew is for. A selection of their favorites. They like them, and I'm sure you will too. If you've watched them all, check out something I've selected special for you. I'm Commander Tom, and I will see you next mine.